Welcome back to another video. It's been a while, hasn't it? Currently driving to Garage Pier's shop right now to continue working on the S14. I never filmed an intro to this video, so that's what I'm doing now. We're finally got the head back from the machine shop and we're just putting the whole thing back together to get it running again. Today will be day three of working on it and getting it put back together to be able to drive it. Um, right now it's Wednesday, this Saturday, which is going to be February 6th is going to be a cars and coffee event hosted at UMC racetrack out in Tooele, Utah. So we're trying to get the uh, car, get the S14 ready for that event so we can take it there on, on this Saturday. They're doing like a, a track thing and a uh, drift thing that you can enter the car in for, but I'm going to do a little braking period on the head. Uh, just be careful, so I'm not going to drive it hard, but I would like to take it off with the Cars and Coffee event. I forgot to mention what's new on the head. So we did Kelford valve springs and bases. We did Super Tech valve stem seals. Um, we also found two intake valves that were bent. So we replaced two of those intake valves. We did ARP head studs, Tomei head gasket, the nice Tomei MLS head gasket. And um, there's a couple other things on the car that I'm gonna do like a short shifter and a shift extension, but we'll get into that in probably another video. But that's everything that's on the head. The head also got entirely remachined and resurfaced. So it's like a brand new head. It's gonna make the car super ref happy and it's gonna make the car drive so much cleaner. We're replacing all the gaskets that we're gonna be using too. So, like I said, today's day three of working on it. I actually just pulled up, but I got to text him to let me in. So, what you're gonna see is probably a little montage of what we're doing until the car probably starts. Yeah, just cranks. As you saw in the last video clip, uh, we got the car cranking, but it wouldn't start. If you kind of notice, it was cutting out during the cranking. And what that means is that the car is somehow hydraulic locking, where there's fluid in the top of the cylinders or something and it's causing so much pressure, it's causing the starter to cut out and it can't turn the motor over. Now, we couldn't figure out what, the, what was going on and we actually ended up blowing a 100 amp fuse. So I actually just ran to an auto parts store and grabbed that. But I think we figured out the problem. So we grounded the coil pack harness wrong and we also didn't time the car right but that's a different issue the car should still start even if the ignition timing is a little off and it's just a little off which we're gonna fix all as well but the coil pack harness we grounded it the car has a ground wire and we grounded it to the coil pack bracket now the coil packs are sitting on a bracket and we grounded the ground wire to that metal bracket that sits on the head there's actually three series or four series or a bunch of different series of RB25 motors and I have the series one. And now after doing research and my buddy Ben doing research from Garage Pier, we figured out that, well one, we timed the car out top dead center, but it's actually supposed to be timed at 15, 15 degrees advanced. So that's our fault, but the car should still start. But we also found out that the wiring specialties harness that's on my car actually 
can't be grounded to the coil pack bracket because the fact that the motor is a Series 1 RB25. That's why the coil pack bracket has plastic bolts in it. We thought that was weird, but we ended up taking one of the plastic bolts out, swapping it for a metal bolt to put the ground on because we didn't know where else to put it because there's no spots on the head. And that's what I was also told on forums. Now, after my buddy Ben read the Wiring Specialties website about the harness that's on the car, we found out that there's a reason that those bolts are plastic and that's so the coil pack bracket doesn't ground to the car because if it does, it actually cuts them all off. The coil packs don't work, which means the car's getting no spark. So, the, so we grounded it to the coil pack bracket and because of that, none of the coil packs are working and so the car is just dumping fuel into the cylinders trying to start itself, but none of the coil packs will spark. So the car is hydraulic locking itself because of the excess fuel and no spark. So we think that's going to solve the problem. I just pulled up. That's what I'm here to do today. We're going to try and fix the coil pack harness, which would be super easy. We're also going to fix the timing and the car should fire right up. All right, so we're back. I got the new fuse put in. I still got to put the wires all back on. And I actually just found out we got to pull basically the whole front of the motor off. Got to pull the intercooler piping off, got to pull the cam cover off, got to pull the cams off, got to pull the crank pulley off, got to pull every belt off so we can get to the timing gear that's on the back of the crank pulley. That's behind, there's a shield down there, a dust shield down there. That's behind because we honestly 100% don't know what the timing is on the car exactly. And there's a mark on that bottom gear for the crank that's gonna tell us. And so we'll, what we did when we first put it all together, we just put it on the TDC mark that's on the crank pulley. Obviously that's wrong. We don't know exactly what it is because it's on a stock ECU, so it's not like we can look. So we're gonna have to pull it all off, but that's basically the game plan for now. It's looking good. Well, everything was going decent. Got all the, got the coil harness regrounded to the firewall, because that's where it's supposed to go. I got those all mounted up. I got a couple of the belts off as well. But as I'm working, all the power shuts off, and then I get trapped in here with the in the dark as I'm working on this. And this car, this is Thursday now. I have this. Car, I have to have this car ready by two nights so I can drive it in the morning an hour and a half to go get it registered before I have to go to work. Oh man. Ugh. Yeah, this is great. Well, wish me luck on figuring this out. The last clip you saw was all the power going off. We actually ended up having to leave last night because if all the power was off, the storage unit place couldn't open or shut the gates to let anyone in. They had to do it manually, which meant we had to get out of there, which mean, meant that we couldn't finish the car, which also meant I missed my appointment for the DMV to get, it, to get my plates. But I just went this morning and I got tip tags. Now I couldn't get plates this morning because I needed a VIN inspection and the car has to be there in person for a VIN inspection and we couldn't finish it last night. So, but I got temp tags, so we're still on for this weekend's car show. So we should be able to just button a couple things up and it should just drive home. I know I keep starting every single video in this car or every single clip in this car, but the car still didn't start. We tried a couple things. It's got a massive oil leak out of the OEM oil cooler for some reason. So we're gonna have to figure that out, but it still won't start. The timing is right. We never had to change the timing because it is actually right. And we have now found out that the key, so like there's a cam angle sensor that connects to the, connects to the front of the cam. And that has a key on it and the cam has like a half moon the cam has the other half moon and they're supposed to interlock together and make like a full circle and it looks like the front of the cam has sheared off somehow and does no longer have that key so i'm going to do some research and try and figure it out but the car's not making it out to the vent i even you know i've busted my freaking butt off this week spent 
over a full day's worth of work, over 24 hours of working in this thing, and it's still not working. And it's been down for almost three months now, so. All for, it all started with changing an exhaust manifold gasket, and now here we are, having to build the head, redo the head, and now we have a possible cam that's broken. Car won't start. Oh my gosh, it is one hell of a ride so but I actually have another build starting soon so stay tuned for that just got home from working on the S14 again and uh, we actually figured out what was wrong with it as you can tell we got the car to start and what was wrong with it was the cast sensor the CAS sensor which is the cam angle sensor um, and that's what tells the injectors when to fire and because those keys were sheared off it could still work but we just had to guess until it did work instead of having the keys line it up for us we got the car to start, got it put together. We're having a weird weird revving issue with the car revving itself really high, but we'll figure that out. And um, there's also an oil leak in the OEM oil cooler, as I already talked about. So we actually did our first little warm up, had to let the car idle for a minute. It idled really high, but we just let it idle for a minute, shut it off, drain the oil. Now I gotta get a new seal for the OEM oil cooler, throw that new seal in, fill it back up with oil, should be able to bring her home.